hello, hello there. It is 2020. Stranger things had happened, has happened, but any more stranger than five round MMA getting back into the podcast game. My name is Alex Ramirez alongside with my co- co-host Albert Sita. Albert, how's it going, man? Uh, it's going good. Um, I know 2020 has not been the best year, but it's actually been pretty good for me. Yeah. Uh, the Dodgers won. <laughs> <laughs> the Lakers won. Despite of everything, Despite right? Despite no. everything going on, uh, we had those two championships. I bought a new house. Yeah. Um, if you go two years back, you can see it's completely a different house. <laughs> uh, and five round MMA is back yeah, up, there baby. There you go. What more can you ask for, right? Well, you're one of the fortunate ones. <laughs> Fortunate ones, I guess, in 2020, this pandemic has hit everybody hard. But uh, we figured now with kind of life settling down, for all of us, we get back into the to the podcast game. Uh, again, uh, we usually have about two co-hosts, solid co-hosts, Jason Hendricks of the Dose Leprechauns podcast, and our executive, esteemed executive producer, Mr. Guillermo Sita, who will be p- joining us probably in the next coming weeks as we kind of get get the ball rolling here and get uh, cranking out with five round MMA shows on the regular here. But as of for right now, it is Albert Sita and myself, the original two, how we first started here a long time ago. Um, if you're curious, you just kind of jump. If you found this stumbled upon, stumbled upon. Or if like YouTube had this one of your recommendations, you can go to our YouTube channel or our website, 5roundmma.com and see our back catalog of about five years with their shows and interviews here. Um, we've interviewed the likes of Kevin Lee, Bruce Buffer. We've Lorenz had uh, Larkin. Lorenz Larkin. We have actually a uh, UFC 255 uh, main event fighter, Alex Perez on our show. Um, a ton of other fighters as well. You guys will recognize if you're a fight fan. Um, again, that's what we did a long time ago. We had, and if you just like fights, yeah. we have some amateur bouts there. Some are some that we have some knockouts on there. Yeah. We got some good, uh, back and forth. We have some that were, I don't know why you even joined MMA fights in there. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, if you're, you're a fan of just fights, I mean, we got, we got that too. Yep. Yep. Um, we got a huge back catalog here. We took a break about two years ago as, uh, most of our, um, staff members here were kind of growing and expanding their families here, but it was never, uh, a, a, a complete stop to five run. I mean, it was always, a just a brief uh, hiatus in production. We were still pretty active on social media. We still gave our picks out um, for the big um, for the big UFC fights. So on our first show back, we're going to talk about, uh, if for, for those of you who might not be familiar with our structure, we are five segments, five, five round segments for our show. Should last about maybe 25 minutes to 30 minutes, depending on how, how long we banter before and in between each round. But that's kind of what we kind of aim for, five, five minute rounds. Um, talk about the various topics. Today's show, we're going to talk about UFC. We're going to talk about some professional wrestling because, hey, love it or hate it, for you MMA purists, professional wrestling and MMA, they do bleed together. You got Brock Lesnar, Bobby Lashley. You got AEW. my boy, Jake Hager. AED, AEW superstar Jake Hager just got victorious in Bellator. You got Matt Riddle in the WWE now. You got guys like Tom Lawler, who's in MLW. MLW champ. So, again, they completely blend in together. So, again, we're going to talk about that as well. And plus, Albert and I and our other co-hosts, we just love professional wrestling. So It gives and, us a reason to talk about and, it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, But for today's show, let's get started with round number one, UFC 255. This Saturday, November 21st, uh, main event bout uh, Davison Figueredo. Versus our former guest, Alex Perez, for the flyweight championship. we got Valentina Shevchenko defending her flyweight championship versus Jennifer Maya. Um, you ever thought, you know how sometimes they have the uh, the, the two weight classes be the co-main event, maybe in case somebody gets hurt? You think they had that idea for the flyweight? Had the men's flyweight and the women's flyweight just in case. Dang. <laughs> right, some intergender uh, matchups here. I mean, I went to Henry Cejudo. <laughs> Let them fight. Let, Let them, them fight. I uh, also got Mike Perry versus Dirty Bird, Tim Means. Caitlin Copenhagen versus Cynthia Calavillo, uh, and the ever, I guess the ageless one, Marisha Shogun Hua against Paul, uh, Craig, this main card, Albert Sita. How do you, um, well, I guess is this a buy or not a buy for you? It's, it's not a buy for not me. Buy. This is, uh, I'll catch the highlights. <laughs> and then when they finally post up like the, the free fights on YouTube, yeah. I'll check it out. And, um, it just, it, I get it. Two championships. Yeah. Uh, I love Valentina and Uh, She has very exciting fights. Uh, I just honestly like Alex Perez. Uh, of course, uh, he, he, he's a he's a favorite in my heart since we've had him here on the show. 
but um, not enough, not enough for me to bite down to to get that that uh twenty or forty fifty dollar ESPN. No, not 60, even, 60 bucks. dude. This thing's like sixty five bucks. Sixty bucks. Yeah. Now, if it was a twenty nine ninety five, I'm yeah, buying. Yeah. I'm buying all day. I'm buying all day. <laughs> but if you give me in the seventy dollar range, I just can't do it. Yeah, I can't do it. So, yeah, yeah. well, yeah, I think so too. Two title fights, especially with the we'll, we'll, we'll kind of work our way down from the main event. Uh, Davidson figured that out. Go go back up after the main event. Um, this is a guy who is a new flyweight champion. We're now officially in the post Mighty Mouse era. Uh, Davidson is probably known for best knocking out just beating him twice, but the first time he didn't make weight, so he wasn't the champion. They ran it back. He made weight. Knocked him out, but if he is, I think he said in quicker time, faster time, <laughs> faster yep. time. Now he's a champion. First title fight against Alex Perez, who was a bantamweight fighter in the UFC a few times. Mm-hmm. Now he's dropping down to 125 to get that title shot. Um, fights out of Irvine, California. Um, always at the gym. Always hardworking. I think this could be a banger of a fight for sure. Um, Alex Perez is a good grappler, good wrestler. Uh, if he could uh, um, kind of dodge uh, Figueroa's power, this could be a, good, a pretty good grappling, uh, scrappy fight. I think. Yeah, I, I think it's if they if they say standing up, I think it's gonna be a stand up war. Yeah, Alex Perez really good in the ground, but I don't think it's in the caliber of uh, the champion to get on the to get on the ground, right? Yeah. So hopefully it's a stand up fight. Uh, co main event: Valentina Shevchenko against Jennifer Maya. Albert, you're saying off camera, what's this type of fight? Do you see? I think this is a feeder match. I'm not, <laughs> I, and that's I'm not again. I don't like to take shots, but yeah. that's it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, if you go and look at uh, Maya's record, it's like win one, lose one, win one, lose one, lose one. So uh, it's pretty much a feeder. I think it's uh, that it's for Valencheco to win, yeah. not to lose. Kind of keep her warm on her toes. Maybe get that rematch with Amanda Nunes ch- champ versus champ thing down the line again. Because I think uh, Valentina's always given uh, Amanda Nunes the the female goat. Um, probably the biggest trouble of her career, I think. So maybe she could have a impressive performance here. Maybe run it back for another fight. Kind of gets you know get the get the, get the crowd going because Amanda Nunes has run through everybody. Um, the platinum Mike Perry <laughs> controversial fighting against the consummate professional Tim Dirty Bird Means. Um, I got to speak to Tim Means on another podcast that I guest hosts on. Shout out to uh, Five Book MMA, my uh, fighting uh, sitting ringside co-host. Uh, Tim Means had a, a funny thing to say that uh, Mike Perry was actually slipping into his DMs talking trash <laughs> with them, which is kind of a Mike Perry thing to do, right? Uh, it's 100% Mike Perry. Yeah. So, uh, this should be fun. Uh, I guess I think it's gonna be a scrap, a good fight, but, um, interesting to see what Mike Perry does. Right. Uh, mostly cause outside of the octagon. I, well, I'm, I, I just want to see what's going to happen as far as his corner. Yeah. I want to see who's in his corner. I want to see if he keeps his winning streak alive by not having a professional corner. Yeah. Uh, he be Mickey gall. Um, I don't know if you can really, uh, show off that win <laughs> but it was it was very interesting to see him pull that win out without having a professional corner yeah this is a uh, mike perry trying to sell his corner <laughs> i think uh, on social media i think darren till is trying to buy that up but um i t- think i think this is the most even fight on the card it should be a scrap for sure yeah i think it should be a good scrap uh mike perry doesn't bike down uh neither does tim mean so it should be a good one uh, could be the probably one of the best fights on the uh, the main card for sure. Um, behind that, you got Caitlin Cokenhagen, who just fought recently, I think a couple weeks ago. Uh, but that's twenty twenty for you if you're healthy and you're clear to fight and you don't have the coronavirus. Times. They'll 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 uh. Well, at least fight until you lose. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and even then, no, even then you might yep, be yep. back. We are time, but we'll, we'll finish up this round real quick. Um, here on this one here. Um, Cynthia Calvillo, who I think the UFC has big plans for. I think uh. I think it was Dana White who said like she gives up that Diaz brothers vibe, and I think for sure having her all, on all a she needs is the card. finishes, and she's a top tier right there. Yeah, so I think um, obviously the UFC wants to continue to push her into the public spotlight, and then the last fight on the main card is what Shogun versus Paul Craig running it back could be Shogun's uh, final final ride, or it could be his final run. Final run. Woo! Sorry, title fight. I mean, yep. Glover Teixeira just won. Yep. He just beat Andre uh, just won. Who knows? I think I think the old man's You got these, uh, these guys pushing 40 who were, who were big stars in their early to mid-2000s and one final run, right? Gives me hope that my prime is still hasn't come yet. <laughs> right? If we get back in the gym and get yep. to our old selves. So that's UFC 255, uh, Saturday, November 21st on ESPN+. Plus. And um, exclusively on there, like Albert said, 60, 65 plus dollars. Um, we will have our picks for that card 
on our Instagram and social media and Twitter uh, platforms. We don't do Facebook though because we don't promote Mark Zuckerberg and his uh, conspiracy theories. So um, yeah, but even though IG is part of Facebook, but whatever. Um, <laughs> that's two fifty five. Uh, we're gonna switch gears now and talk about professional wrestling. Next week is a big weekend for the wrestling fans. It's a WWE Survivor Series. We're gonna take a look at that that card coming up next. Five round MMA. Welcome back. Time for round number two. WWE on Sa Sunday, November 22nd is going to have one of its big pay-per-views of the year. WWE Survivor Series. It's going to be a Raw versus SmackDown event, which has been that way for the past couple years, I, th I think, to try and get some excitement in SmackDown versus Raw brand versus brand, even though, you, you, honestly, you can't even tell what show is what anymore. But it's a conversation for a different day. <laughs> um, I, but I, I do miss those those classic Survivor Series. You yeah. know, when you used to have the Heart Foundation versus... Or each, each team had a team captain. had yeah. kind of a theme to it. And kind of some, you know, at least some storylines. Or at least it was kind of a fun event, I guess. But now, I mean, how it is now, it's brand versus brand. We got the, the main event, Randy Orton, WWE champion versus Roman Reigns, the universal champion. You got Raw Women's Champion Asuka versus SmackDown Women's Champion Sasha Banks. Raw Tag Team Champion, The New Day versus SmackDown Tampi, ta Tag Team Champions, The Street Profits. You got United States Champion Bobby Lashley versus Intercontinental Champion Sami Zayn. And you got a traditional five-on-five -five Women's Survivor Series for the women and the men, Raw versus SmackDown. Albert, what do you want to focus on first, the main event? Yeah, we can work for our yeah. way down. I think um, this is kind of an uneventful main event for a lot of fans. It's two guys with the old school kind of a style who aren't very very good workers, two of the best in the business. I just don't think they can lead. It's just that kind of style that it's not that Kenny Omega, Hangman Page, you know, fast-paced, New Japan style kind of hard-hitting um, wrestling matches that a lot of fans like nowadays. Randy Orton's about as part of, one of the old school guys now. Doesn't do any high spots. Classic, you know, slow selling type of match. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now. I want to see a couple of spears. Yeah. Uh, like maybe like five attempts of the of the RKO. Yeah. This could be honestly, I think a stinker of a main event. If yeah. I'm being honest. Yeah. I, I don't think it's going to be the match of the night. Yeah. Not even close. Yeah, so we'll see. I mean, it's two consummate WB consummates going at it. We'll see. I mean, Randy, Randy Roman Reigns obviously I think has to come on top on this one. What do you think? Put your, book, I, I, I put think, your booking hat on. I think uh, it makes sense for Roman Reigns to win it. Um, and then, like you said, if the plans are for Randy Orton to face John Cena later on, uh, they both have to go for that special 16, number 16. Yep. And that way it sets that up. So, yeah, putting my booking hat, it just makes too much sense for Roman Reigns not to win. Yeah. Um. Uh, women's title fight uh, Raw Women's Oscar champion versus uh, SmackDown Women's champion Sasha Banks probably the two best wrestlers on the roster two, the, the two best female wrestlers for sure um, it's been done before a lot of times already um, do you see them doing anything different this time around and who do you think can come on top I, I think there's going to be some, some new spots but I honestly think this is going to be the match of the night I think this one's going to outperform all the other matches Yeah. so if there's one match to check out I think it's this one um, yeah, we've seen the matchup before, but it's still a good matchup. Yeah. And I, and, uh, if I got to pick a winner, uh, I got to go with Oscar just because I think it's going to be a dirty finish. Okay. And yeah, Bailey coming. Yeah. In there. And Bailey has to continue her feud with, yeah. uh, Sasha Banks. Yeah. You don't think they give, uh, Sasha Banks a clean win to celebrate her Mandalorian, no, it, it ha, it her Mandalorian to, guest spot. It, it's so over WWE heads that they, they don't know what they have. Yeah. Vincent Nova Star Wars. Is. Yeah. So <laughs> trust me, I, I think, I think it's a dirty finish. So, uh, one match I'm hopeful for is the raw, the tag team match, the New Day versus the Street Profits. Now, do you think they're going to try and top uh, what AEW did, the Young Bucks versus the FTR a couple weeks ago at the Full Gear and try and top that match? Which was, I think, Dave Meltzer, like, oh, I think over five stars, I think. Um, do you think they're trying to do that kind of spot heavy, or what do you think, something different? In a perfect world, I wish they would be spot heavy and try to outperform the Young Bucks versus the, the rival. Uh, FTR. I mean, sorry. Sorry, FTR. Um, but I'm, I, I see them since they're very gimmick heavy. I seen this being a gimmick match. A lot of red cups. Yeah. Pancakes. Pancakes. So I honestly think this is going to be a gimmick match on paper. Oh my gosh. Do I wish they would just wrestle? Yeah. It's probably and for the this, best this, athletes. This could be like the match that they can, they, I think they have in them to outperform the young bucks in FTR. Yeah. But it's, I think it's going to be gimmick based. Yeah. I think it's the, athletically that they're, 
New Day and Street Profits are way better athletes than the FTR and the Young Bucks, but we'll see if they do go straight wrestling match or gimmicks upon gimmicks and like stop the match and halt it or whatnot. But then we got uh, Bobby Lashley versus Sami Zayn. What do you got on that one? Uh, I think Bobby Lashley's winning. If I'm booking it, I'm putting Sami Zayn over because the kid needs a push. I think he's underused. He's underrated. And even though he's the Intercontinental Champion, I still think they haven't used him to his full potential. Yeah, I think Sami Zayn has opportunity in today's climate to be one of the top heels. Or it could be one of the biggest tweener. He's very vocal on social media. What more? He could either push that buttons of maybe the conservative fans WWE has. Or he could be the hero of the more progressive people who's, who view themselves political. In w, I mean, who, if they want to go that political realm, I think Sami Zayn might be the perfect uh, instrument to kind of get that. But I think, again, that's above WWE's head. Too controversial for Vince McMahon in this corporate era. Um, more than likely, it could be a squash match with Bobby Lashley oh. to get over the, 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 the almighty one and keep that hurt business uh I think they're kind of in between. Are they heels or faces? Because they were heels, but then Retribution came and beat them up. And then now, I don't know what they are, really. And then the, beating up on Tyrus O'Neill every week, does that make you a heel? I don't know. <laughs> well, they're, they're a face in my heart. Yeah. Because Retribution's so bad. Yeah. And then you got the two classic five-on-five women's and um, men's smash. I don't think anything spectacular is going to happen out of those ones. Um, kind of just like whoever's left on the roster that they want to kind of feature on the pay-per-views kind of put together in these matches that really don't mean too much, right? Um, obviously, you got the W Network. What do you think about this card? Is this uh, you set time set aside, set away some time on Sunday to watch this? 100% no. <laughs> I'm probably going to check it out, and I'm not going to get too ahead of our segments, but yeah. the only reason I'm checking it out is to see what they do for The Undertaker. Okay. Well, it's a perfect segue here. As we enter round number three, we're going to talk about The Undertaker's legacy if it's kind of being diminished now that he's kind of being out there more, we're seeing more of Mark Calloway and the Undertaker is starting to fade away now into everybody's memory. So don't go anywhere. We're going to talk about that next. Five round MMA. All right. Welcome back. So this round, we're going to talk about the Undertaker because on Sunday at the Survivor Series, they're kind of uh, above everything else. It's going to be a thank you or something like that, a 30 year uh, celebration of Undertaker's career because he did make his WWE. WWE debut at Survivor Series 30 years ago. Um, it's been kind of hush hush on what his exactly his role is going to be and exactly what they're going to do. Uh, but Albert, he's not going to wrestle in a match, right? Uh, from what they've been advertising, what they've been marketing, it seems like it's just a celebration. And I hope it's just a celebration. I hope we see a video package. He comes out, does his entrance, leaves the gloves on the middle yeah. of the ring, peace out officially, and then that's it. It's almost kind of waste to do like a spot with him when there's no crowd there, right? To get the reaction. So why have him come out and beat people up? For what? I mean, just to, so you, we can see him do a tombstone pile driver one last time. I mean, if he can even do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't see I don't see them using him as an actual like spot. I think, it, and I don't see. I think that that's just how they're going to close the show. Yeah. So now with uh, we've seen uh, last year or was it this year? I forgot. I think it was this year they had the Undertaker Last Ride documentary on um, the WWE Network where, you know, we got to see more of the man, Mark Calloway, who's been uh, pretty much 30 years, has been exclusively living the role of the Undertaker. Now, do you think as we, he moves forward, gives more interviews as the man, Mark Calloway, we see how he is. He has a social media account where he's you know posting his personal life. Do you think that way in any way kind of hinder the character of the Undertaker? I'm going to like, like Hulk Hogan, right? Mm -hmm. When Hulk Hogan, the character disappeared and Hulk Hogan, the man came out more public. We kind of saw what a douchebag Hogan really was, right? Yeah. He was not yeah. Mr. Say my prayers. Say your prayers. Take my all American, right? He's a racist comments. Had that weird sex <laughs> tape. Um, do you kind of see that happening with the Undertaker? Or Undertaker's a lot, a lot more smart. Than no, that, I, I, well, for one, I don't think Undertaker has that type of, <laughs> is that as a douchebag? Like, yeah. Like Hogan? I, I think he's from what from you see in the documentary, he seems like a really cool dude. Yeah. And honestly, uh, for a fan, I'd rather see the perspective of Mark Calloway. Yeah. Than the Undertaker. Like I, I obviously, if you're a fan, you have followed the Undertaker's career to a T. I mean, uh, he's had an amazing match, his amazing career. But I think it's another level for a fan to know how Mark Calloway 
uh, went through the process, you know, behind the scenes, whatever. So I, I, I dig all that stuff. I like it. Break the fourth wall. It, the, to me, this is different because the career's over. Yeah. And so now you can kind of reflect on Ho- it. Hopefully it's over. Now, if they're breaking it during too much, I, I can see that. I mean, like, imagine Macho Man Randy Savage kind of breaking character back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Ah, that kind of ruined it. But, yeah. I mean, he's, he's reflecting on his career. I think it's different times. I, I like it. As a fan, I want more of it. Yeah, I think, too, I think he signed, like, an exclusive contract with, like, WWE, so he can't, I think it's preventing him from doing that, like, full-on unfiltered podcast level, like Stone Cold is doing, like some other wrestlers are doing. So I think they kind of locked him up to where anything he does is WWE-related, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so when he does talk, he might not be, he could still have that corporate kind of, like, gag on him as well. Like, he really can't give that full kind of disclosure of what, what Vince is really like and what yeah, really goes I don't, on I don't there. Think, I don't think you ever get a uh, full opinionated uh, Mark Calloway. Yeah. But I think we will see more glimpses of who he is as a person. Yeah. So, um, again, 30 years, whatever they have in store, hopefully it's nothing too crazy. Just kind of, like you said, celebration of him. Um, before we wrap up this round, what is one of your favorite, if not most memorable undertaker moments since you've been a wrestling fan? Actually, the more I think about it, uh, even though it's more mankind than undertaker, I, I think it's hard not to remember when the undertaker, Choke slam <laughs> mankind through the hell in a cell and also threw him out out of the hell in the yeah, cell. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like burned into my mind yeah. when that happened. But my favorite feud or my favorite storyline for the Undertaker was the whole uh him and Kane and what was in the in the in the in the ashes. The secret that the, Paul Bear yeah, had the, Paul, the secret that Paul Bear to me, I was eating that up uh, yeah. when the, when that was going. On. That's my favorite moment. <laughs> I think for me, go back a little little further than that. Uh, I forgot what it was like Royal Rumble 94, somewhere in the, in the mid 90s when he wrestled Yokozuna in the casket match. And then the all of the locker room heels came out and completely <laughs> destroyed the Undertaker. They all did their finishing move on him. Head shrinkers came out and did headbutts and body splashes. And they rolled like his dead carcass into the casket and they're wheeling it back to the to the back of the locker room. All of a sudden it stops. Then lightning strikes down and like all of a sudden this Undertaker gives his speech from inside the casket and says, I'll be back <laughs> and whatever. And granted now it's super hokey, made no sense back then to an adult. But at the time, I wasn't even 10 years old yet. I was eating that stuff up like crazy. It was amazing. It was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Granted, I was a target audience that Vince had in mind. And guess what? I ate it up. And some 20 years later, I still think about it. I still talk about it. So <laughs> say what you want about the hokiness, the cartoonness. It worked when you're a kid. And I, I don't know about you, but when I was eight or nine, I wasn't a smart mark. I was a kid. I, to me, it all made it all looked real to me, right? So uh, I was on to it, but I didn't care. <laughs> so that's it for this round. Uh, 30 years, Undertaker. This Saturday at Survivor Series 2020 on the WWE Network. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about uh, MMA, but more particularly, the face of mixed martial arts, the notorious one, Conor McGregor, coming up next. Five round MMA. Welcome back. We're talking about now. Switch back to MMA here. Um, Notorious. Back, if you look at all of our Instagram posts and our uh, old videos, whenever we talked about the notorious Conor McGregor, we got the most likes. The most views. So you know on our first show back, we had to bring Mr. McGregor up and in conversation, mostly because he has pegged to fight Dustin Poirier in the early part of 2020. I think it's UFC 257. Albert Cena, when you made um, when this fight was announced, what were your first thoughts? Uh, my first thought was, thank God we get to see Conor McGregor. <laughs> I never, I never, I'm, I, I know my bread and butter and that's why I go to. Yep. You gonna give me views? You gonna give me listens? We're gonna best, talk about you. Best believe I bought the action figure. Best <laughs> believe he's on the screen. Where's your uh, bottle of proper twelve at? Oh, uh, right. As soon as you enter my house, the first thing you're gonna see is a proper twelve right there, <laughs> ready to go. So I guess um, for me, it was a little puzzling. Like, okay, Dustin Poirier, really? Uh, Conor McGregor beat him before. I mean, on paper and like rankings wise, and you know, fight. Fight stats. Does this fight make sense for you for Conor McGregor for Dustin Poirier? The the only reason it makes sense for me is because you want to run. You want a uh, Conor McGregor uh, run here. Yeah. And I don't think you just start off right off the bat uh, doing the Diaz uh, trilogy. I think that's those 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 matches are the the finales. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, honestly, if it was me, if I if, if it was down to competition and I want to see the best competition, I would have put Conor McGregor. Versus um, 
uh, Be- Bellator incoming uh, Michael Chandler, who <laughs> I honestly, if I, if, if I care about just the fights, yeah, I want to see that. I want to see Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler. That to me, that's that, that's probably the the best fight you can put together. Yeah, but I don't think it's the smartest. I think if you're a businessman, I think you want to get the most out of Conor McGregor. I think you start with Dustin Poirier. I'm not saying Dustin Poirier can't be Conor, yeah. but it is if you look at the the roadmap, it's the way to go. Got it. You know, I don't think Dustin Poirier is going to take him down. I don't think Dustin Poirier is going to outstrike him. <laughs> so, so basically, this is kind of like. Who can we give Conor McGregor to get back in there to get you know his uh, his stamina back to see if he got it? Um, it's almost kind of strange because when McGregor was first coming up and talking all this trash, who did they put up against him to see if he was for real? Dustin, Dustin Poirier. Poirier, and he beat Dustin Poirier, and everyone's like, okay, well this McGregor guy is for real now. So now rewind. Let me fast forward. Now we're we're in twenty twenty one. Conor McGregor's in and out, one foot in, one foot out. We give him Dustin Poirier again to see if he's really in, if he's really out, if, he, I mean, if he's still the, capable. The, of the irony, right? even, even that story alone, yeah, I I like because yeah, before everyone's like, oh, Connor's all pipe, all hype until he beat Dustin Poirier, then he got <laughs> he, he got taken. Uh, uh he, yeah, he, he, he was real. He wasn't yeah. just all yeah. hype. So yeah. and now it's the same thing. I think a lot of people uh, have counted Connor out. I think a lot of people don't even consider that Cowboy win really legit, yeah. especially since Cowboys come was coming off for like three, four losses. So wh- what a beautiful story. Yeah. He starts his, his uh, road to superstardom with Dustin Poirier. He starts his comeback with Dustin Poirier. <laughs> I like it. So um, obviously McGregor's bigger than the title. He's bigger than any UFC title at all, but the UFC probably likes to have that, you know, UFC lightweight champion, Conor McGregor, you know, just attached to him. Right. That whenever he goes around, it's his UFC is there. Um, if he if he's victorious or if he loses, how many times do you think Conor McGregor fights in 2021? If he wins, I see three fights. OK. Second one being a title fight. The second if he beats Poirier, Poirier he's gonna, he's we do a title shot. shot. Second one. Third one. Will you do the, the Diaz trilogy or you do whoever's the, the hottest fighter at the time yeah. and have him defend the belt? But I see three fights. If he loses, I only see two. It's it's right. If he loses against Dustin Poirier, you got to do the Diaz trilogy with Diaz. and win, lose or draw. That's it. Yeah. Cause you can't really get a tile shot after being Nate Diaz. Yeah. One, right. That makes sense. I, I I think that makes sense. Like, yeah, I can't honestly that. Yeah. That's, I think that's a perfect scenario for him. I mean, 2021, 20, there's no reason why he, if he's healthy, he sh- we shouldn't see more McGregor. I think the UFC wants that, especially if they're going to start trickling in the audience or they can go, you know what? Let's go to a country that has the coronavirus, COVID-19 more under control. We could pack a house in New Zealand because they're oh, having live events in New Zealand. You can, you can literally, <laughs> I think you can spin the globe, pick a spot. Yeah. And if and you do a Conor McGregor fight, it's sold out. Yeah. So they might have a title fight in New Zealand, sell it out because, you know, they're a little more under control there. Um, if they want to get that more bang for your buck with McGregor and not just have McGregor fight in an empty arena. Um, yeah, I think this Poirier, great fighter, former interim champ, but this is definitely to see where McGregor's at. Um, not the sexiest of fights, but again, I think you hit the nail on the head. It it's, a, too much it's, a, it's a measuring stick to see where you're at. If you can hang in there with Dustin Poirier right now, who's been active and you can either show yourself or you can beat him, then okay, McGregor, you are who we thought you were <laughs> and we'll put you back right back into the mix of things, um, into the lightweight division or wherever he wants to go. So that's it for this round. We got one more round coming up. We're going to focus on the UFC's lightweight division. Now that Kahib Nurmagomedov is retired, there's no champion. And with the likes of Conor McGregor coming back and see what what holds, what the future holds in store for this, uh, probably the most exciting division in the UFC. Five round MMA. Welcome back. Fifth and final round. We're going to focus on the future of the lightweight division in the UFC. Now that Kahib Nurmagomedov is sailed off into the sunset, supposedly. Um, we got about four or five ranked fighters now who are basically who all could be champion in their own right. You got Dustin Poirier, you got Justin Gaethje, you got Tony Ferguson, and you got the wild card Conor McGregor in there as well. Who, who else am missing that top five? Uh, I mean, you could put Dan Hooker in there yeah. just because he has a little steam. And I would even put um, Diego Ferreira. I know I said his last name wrong. Yeah. Uh, he's the eight. I'll show you right here. He's the... What they got him ranked here? He's the eighth ranked fighter. Yeah. Uh, let me pull him up real quick because I think I think people forget about him. Yeah. Uh, he just had an impressive showing. So, 
The guy be Anthony Pettis. Yeah, the guy be Anthony Pettis. So he has impressive showing. So I would throw him in there. Uh, just you know, if not an alternate. Uh, and you got Michael Chandler too. Uh, oh yeah, and Michael Chandler. So it actually makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think the you got what you got. Gaethje, Chandler, uh, Ferguson, uh-huh. and then what? Poirier, that top four. But Poirier's taken out now. Yeah. So. Like you got Dan Hooker. Yeah. And then Michael Chandler, you yeah. have to put in there. And then uh, Diego. So, I mean, how do you kind of see this playing out? Is it all depending on what? Is it coincidence that McGregor and Poirier are fighting at the beginning of the year? No. <laughs> Just see where that goes, right? Yeah. No. So that's like the first opening round of this so called tournament yeah. to see. Who else is going to get that? I think the U.S. is hoping McGregor will want to keep fighting and he wins. And then you kind of get him into if, the title if shot. If you kind of look at the calendar, and if this one starts off in January, yeah, I think by March, you can do a championship fight. Technically. Yeah. You would have to stack one of the cards with one of these lightweights in there. Yeah. But you can do it. And I think, I think all these fighters can easily fight 2021 calendar year. Yeah. You know, Tony Ferguson seems to be still good. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Justin Gaethje didn't seem like he took serious damage from that Kahit fight. So he's good. Michael Chandler, I mean, he just needs some time to weight cut. I mean, yeah. you just can't throw the guy in there after doing a weight cut for no reason. <laughs> so he's yeah. good. So they're all they're all good. I, I can see it mid-2021 championship fight yeah i think out of all of them obviously dana white probably has no love loss for tony ferguson he's probably gonna get the hardest road to a title yeah. shot right i, I think they're gonna say tony ferguson you gotta go past michael chandler yeah if yeah. he gets past michael chandler just oh, to you gotta run just, just, just to get you back if you want the title <laughs> and then we'll give you yeah. uh yeah um for sure for sure because for, for some reason just dana white has a hard on for uh, for uh tony ferguson not in a good way um i do think at the end of all after the dust settles my opinion i could be biased but I think that Tony Ferguson is the last one standing with that belt. Wow. And I believe that the end of 2021, he's going to be champion. He's going to call out Kahib to get that title fight. Champion versus former Ooh, champion. If, would that be if a It finally line? happens. We finally get to see it. And then he's going to come out one more time to go with 30-0, and 0, I think, or whatever, to see. We could finally see Tony Ferguson versus Kahib. They're both going to be champions. I, I think that's the way it's going to be. I, I'm praying it's going to be that way. If if anything, we deserve that in 2021 after after we got what we got in 2020. I'm the hugest Conor McGregor fan, but I'm yeah. a sucker for a good storyline, <laughs> and I love that storyline. Right. If you can, if Tony Ferguson can go back in it, win the title, and we finally get the Kahib Tony match, oh what a what get, a story! Oh, 2020, <laughs> I don't even care what happened. That would be the be- that would be a beautiful MMA story. You get both of them, you keep them in protective bubble. They don't get they. You know, you take care of them as much as you can so they don't get hurt. You move, remove all the cables or whatever they're going to trip on or whatever. And you make sure that fight happens. I think if there's one fight that would entice Kahib to come out of retirement. It has have- to be that one. He owes it. He yeah. owes it to the MMA fans. Yep. But, yeah, I lo- oh, you know what? I, you, you just made my day. <laughs> because now I'm something, all, to, something to dream about. All I'm dreaming about is that path for Tony Ferguson. <laughs> Well, uh, we're going to wrap up that with now we've got about 30 seconds left in the fifth and final round. I want to take the time to thank Albert Yu for setting this back up again, getting us back and going for five round MMA. Uh, in the upcoming weeks, we'll be joined by our fellow co hosts, you know, uh, Jason Hendricks, the Dose Uppercons podcast, and our executive producer, Gary Mosita. I know they've, they've both been itching to come back in and uh, kind of talk some trash with us here. Um, until the meantime, we have, like I said, we have a back catalog, about five years worth of shows. On our website, that's 5roundmma.com. It's F-I-V-E roundmma.com. You can follow us on social media, Instagram, at 5roundmma. And we actually, if, you, if you're if you like, you know what? These guys don't know what they're talking about. Keep scrolling, and we have actual amateur MMA bouts yes, on our, a, in on our, our YouTube, YouTube channel. Cha- YouTube channel. Uh, there is some KOs in there. There's some submissions. There is some back and forth. There are some guys that... You, they should never even thought about entering MMA, but it's still fun to watch. <laughs> so yep. uh, there, we we have we have a little bits of everything. You yeah. want to see Lawrence Larkin before uh, he was Lawrence Larkin, Alex, Alex Perez. Perez. We got uh, Bruce we, Buffer. We got we got Kevin Lee before he enters the UFC. Yep. So we have a bunch of treasure in there if you want to dig up. Uh, real quick, you want uh, so uh, we're gonna release the audio on Tuesdays. Yes, the video because 
we like to see each other is <laughs> going to be released on Wednesdays on our YouTube channel. Yeah. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, yep. Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Uh, you can get it on uh, all, we'll, your po- all your podcasts. All podcasting. So we'll, we'll we'll tweet at we'll uh, tweet and put that out to on our social media platforms where you can get um, the audio version of this podcast. But for sure, the video version will be on our YouTube channel. And for sure, we're gonna try to have more guests on here. For sure, yep. we're gonna bring back our boy Jason Hendricks, yep. who likes to fire us up. <laughs> and uh, if you guys do not know our executive producer Guillermo Cita. He will be calling in because me and we're brothers. They but can't be in the man, same room together. Woo! Woo! He knows <laughs> I push my buttons. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Again, Twitter, Instagram. Um, we're looking into TikTok. Um, if it's not banned, I'm not dancing. <laughs> I'm not dancing. We'll look into TikTok. We'll get that going. Um, again, the future is going to be bright for us. Thank you guys for tuning in, and then we'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in.